Hey everybody, Mr. Bennett here, back with another video. We're going to look at the periodic table today, and I've got a, I'm going to start with a picture of the atom and a model of the atom because I want to make sure we can see the connection between the atomic structure and the periodic table structure because they line up very, very closely with each other. And the model we're going to use, remember we use models because I cannot see atoms, is called the Bohr model. And this one's out of date. We don't use this anymore as our, as our basis for atomic um, quantum mechanics stuff, but it still matches the properties on the table well enough to where we can apply apply it here now today in a simplistic way. Um, so what the Bohr model says is that atoms have distinct shells that are full of electrons. So in this model, the nucleus right here in the center has the protons and the neutrons, and that's where all the mass of the atom is. It's very, very dense. And around the outside, he had, or we have what Bohr called shells. They go in layers around the outside of the atom. Think like a jawbreaker. So there's different layers of colors of candy around the core of that. The atomic model we're using works similarly. We're interested in the outside shell, and this is called the valence. And valence just means outside, and we're interested in that because those are the electrons that are involved in everything from reactivity to bonding, and that's what we're going to be covering as we go further into the chapter. So the valence electrons determine the chemical properties that we can predict using the periodic table. So if we've got these electron shells, there are rules for how we fill these shells in. And the periodic table tells us how the shells are filled in. But again, all we're interested in is this outside ring. And usually what I do when I'm drawing these pictures is I put little X's on the outside. So this particular atom has got three shells, nucleus, shell one, shell two, shell three and it has three valence electrons. So let's get to the periodic table because that's really what we're here for. So here we've got an outline of the periodic table and my periodic table is split up into columns and rows. And the columns and rows tell me different things as well as the different sections of the table but for today we're gonna focus on columns and rows only. Columns, these are called groups or families because all of the elements in each column have similar properties. And what the columns tell us is the number of valence electrons. So how many electrons are in that outside shell that we talked about up here in our Bohr model? Now, when we're numbering, there's a little bit of a not a trick to it, but there's a little bit of a, a technicality you have to pay attention to. On a modern periodic table, this middle section is called the transition block, or the transition metals. If you look at your numbering, it numbers 1 through 18 straight across, 18 columns on the periodic table. If you look at the Roman numerals, we have group 1a, 2a, and then we go to 3b, because this block follows different rules than the main group elements, these tall sides. I'm going to skip the 1 through 18 numbering just to keep things clear. So we're going to number our periodic table across. This is going to be group number 1, group number 2, and then we skip the middle. Group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and group 8. So number those columns groups 1 through 8, or family 1 through 8 across your periodic table. What that means is every element in group 1 has one valence electron. Every element in group 2 has two valence electrons, and so on, 3 through 8. This is very important when we get to bonding. I'm not going to dive into this too much right now. Um, so that's the groups, so the columns on the periodic table. They tell me the number of valence electrons. We also have rows. Rows on the table are called periods. And periods, they tell me, I'll do this one in red, they tell me the number of shells. And if you notice on your periodic table, there are seven rows. So this is numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the atoms down here at the very bottom have seven of these electron shells around their nucleus. They're very large atoms. The atoms at the top, like hydrogen, only has one electron shell. So I can give a coordinate now. So hydrogen, I have one electron shell and only one valence electron. So if we were to redo this, you don't have to do it on your paper, but if you're just watching, I have one valence shell and it gets one electron in it. This would represent a hydrogen atom. Helium is still in the first period. It has one shell, but this one 
actually has two electrons, and I'm going to talk about that in class another day. Don't worry about it right now. This is the basic outline of the periodic table, the rows and the columns. So groups, they tell us the number of valence electrons. Rows, they tell us the number of shells in the periodic table. The other thing that we can figure out from the periodic table is what forms an ion or what types of ions are formed. And an ion is simply an element with a, uh, an electric charge. So it's going to be positive or negative. Remember elements, they're neutral by design. Um, so if I have one proton, I'm going to have one electron. Elements on the left side of the table, so these are on the left, they lose electrons and they become positive. So these are positive ions. I've lost my negative, I'm now positive, and we call these cations, C-A-T-I-O-N. The T looks like a plus, positive, cations. That means on the right-hand side, these guys gain electrons. And there's rules for losing and gaining that we're going to get into later. I just want to introduce it now. So these are on the right side. So if losing is positive, that means gaining makes me more negative. And these are called anions, A-N-I-O-N. And I like to think of this one as an acronym, A negative ion. So there's little tricks to remembering this. All you need to know right now is if I'm on the left side, I tend to lose my electrons, I become positive. If I'm on the right hand side, I tend to gain electrons and I become negative. So right there, there's three things that the periodic table tells us just by its structure alone. There's a lot more. These are the three main ones. So you've got some follow up questions you're going to do using this um, structure. You're also going to be labeling the families, the groups, um, the columns on the periodic table in class. So uh, make sure you keep hang on to these notes. Don't lose them anywhere. Um, and we can uh, we're going to talk more about this in class. And the whole next chapter is going to be using the periodic table. So if you have questions, either leave me a comment below or ask me in class. Make sure you get those things cleared up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.